Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, a very special player profile for the Canfield Cardinals and uh, a gentleman that I've talked to, I feel like, since uh, he was, what, 14 years old at this point, and now he is one of the standout baseball players in this entire area, maybe even the entire state, hitting over 400 and over, uh, on base percentage over 1,000. This guy is the real deal. He's uh, even added to the things that he's done over the last three years. Now he's a star on the mound as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this time we bring in Canfield Cardinal superstar, Mr. Mikey Patelis. Mikey, what's up, buddy? It's great to see you. It's great to see you, Deej. How you doing today? I'm great, man. I'm great. From your standpoint, this has been a special start to the year. You guys just getting back from Myrtle Beach. Explain to me why this trip is so important uh, along the way of what you guys are trying to do here in 2024. Oh, it's always special because, you know, down here, the weather's always bad during this time of year. So just being able to get games in down in South Carolina, just to play a couple games, teams you'll never see again. I mean, some of the kids were pretty good down there that we played. Those teams were solid. Just to see good competition, it, it always brings it back to Ohio to be like, hey, we can definitely compete with anybody in this state. And I think that's a big point to be had. I mean, Canfield always competes. There's not a game that you guys – I just talked to Trent Rarick. There's not a game you guys ever back away from or ever nervous about uh, playing another team. You're always willing to put your necks out there. Even with, what, two seniors this year with you and Trent uh, having to lead the team, you're trying to get some leadership from the underclassmen. How has that gone for you as someone who has been that leader uh, behind the dish for so long – trying to rustle up some new leaders of the Cardinal Nation. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be a struggle the first week or two, but I think we've gotten through that. And, I mean, as of lately, we've had a couple juniors already step up to be starting to be those guys that can compete in whatever spot you put them in. Uh, David Murphy, who didn't play much last year as uh, a sophomore, has really came into his own down in Myrtle Beach. He hit the ball really well. Him and Zane Jadala both. Both of those guys have really came to their own down in Myrtle Beach. And I, I just hope everybody can bring it back here ready to go and so we can go get Boardman today and tomorrow. How do you guys stay consistent? I, I guess that's the hardest part, and, and it's for everybody, not just Canfield. I mean, staying consistent, getting those games in, and then coming back, and then having to wait and worry about the weather and things of that nature. How do you kind of stay on your game? Uh, personally, and, and how do you keep your teammates locked in on games that you, you're not sure if you're going to play until 4 or 5 o'clock? I mean, yeah, for sure. Consistency is always a big thing with baseball. You can't get too high when you're doing well. You can't get too low when you're doing really bad. I think it's just getting down to the basics and knowing what you can do best at the best time possible. Like, especially with my game, catching – I do stuff with Coach Weimer off the machine, doing certain drills that I know will help me. And I know I know Boom does too, uh, Dylan Mancini. We call him Boom. That's always a, a fun joke that we always have. But, um, yeah, just staying consistent with what you do each and every day at practice kind of sets forth the week. And no matter who you play, just maybe a little minor problem here or there and a swing – or maybe you don't throw well that day, you just go back and look and be like, what can I do just a little bit to fix it and not overwhelm yourself with all the problems, like you know, too many balls. Just focus on one little thing to fix. I think one of the biggest things that I love and cherish about you is you are the ultimate teammate. You're the ultimate coachable student athlete. When Gary Niddle or any of your coaches ask you to step in and do something, there's never hesitation. You just constantly put your hand in the pile. For you, where did you learn that? I mean, you're, you're asked to pitch this year a little bit more, probably a lot more uh, than you intended to be. You're one of the best catchers in this area, and to have to add that to your repertoire and to your toolkit, so to speak, uh, is that something that you welcomed with open arms? Is that something that you thought, well, maybe I should think about this a little more? What, how, how did that transition go from you being a, a first-team, first-ballot uh, all-state catcher to being a pitcher as well, because that's a tough balance to have, Mikey. Yeah, it, it is at times, especially um, as we start up, the body's starting to get used to playing every day now. 
And just like last year, catching and then pitching the next day. Yeah, it's, it takes a toll a little bit, like during the early couple of season, uh, during a couple of weeks. But after that, I mean, it, it just really gets into a flow. I mean, I've been pitching and basically doing whatever I can since I was younger. I mean, my dad always told me, play whatever position you can, because you never know what it's going to be in college, because that was the ultimate goal go play in college, go have fun. And I feel like catching is definitely my main state there. But hey, if they ask me to pitch, I'll go pitch. Look at you, two-way player, uh, no doubt. I mean, you a perfect segue into the next question. You talked about college. You're heading to Tiffin, right? From, from that standpoint, yes. there's, a, there's, a, there's a slew of Cardinals uh, and a few of them recently that have made their way to Tiffin, if you add your name to that list. Why Tiffin? Why is it is it that they're drawing the kids from Canfield in that direction? Um, Tiffin, it kind of just felt like home because all the kids there, when I went there on a visit, watched their inner squad, they were all just talking to me like I was just like a normal kid. Nobody treated me like some like superstar. Like I felt like I just fit right in. And Coach Wilkins and Coach Boz did the same thing. They were just talking to me like a like a normal kid. And I thought that was really a segue of like, hey, this is really a spot for me. When you look at that, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. And most people won't understand until they actually go through the recruiting process and understanding that there's academics, obviously, that go into that and finding the right spot for them. So not only can they be on that team, but they can see themselves playing on an everyday basis. I don't think you're just going there to have fun and to say, hey, I'm a, a I put. I play college baseball. You're going there to make an impact for you. What were some of the things that you were looking at that Tiffin checked the box for you? Uh, definitely compatibility. I mean, Ricky Havrilla, he basically gave me a spot there because he was talking to coach Wilkins. He's like, Hey, you want a catcher? This is your guy. I've been watching this kid since he was like 12. He knows how to play the game. So I, I can't think I can't thank him and Coach Habs and that entire family enough for giving me the opportunity to even talk to Coach Wilkins and be a part of this program that I, I will be forever thankful for. And I, I haven't even stepped on campus yet. And I guess that's my fault for taking you there here early in the, in the interview. What expectations do you have? for this team, for yourself, for this particular season. I mean, we talked to Trent. You guys have a tough schedule, one of the toughest in the entire area, and you're not going to back down. What expectations do you have for yourself? You're off to a rousing start, my friend. Can you keep that up? Are you are expecting to keep that up? Are you expecting to hit some of the, the, the valleys as opposed to just the peaks? How, does, how are things going for you, and what are your expectations moving forward? Well, if the expectation is to dip down, DJ, I, I don't think we'd be having a good year. <laughs> so yeah i mean it could just goes back to the little things like staying on my game the way that i know how to play try not to try not to get too high try not to get too low just kind of ride it out and have fun with this group because this group is so much fun especially with my brother here the only time i've gotten to play with him in my entire life so we're just going to ride it out together and I'm going to leave it all on the table for these young guys because after Trent and I are gone, I mean, it's, it's all the younger guys left. So whatever they're left with, what I can give them, I will give them whatever I can. You guys are kind of the last that have seen the postseason. I mean, you, these, these unbelievable regular season, uh, you know, runs and then postseason just dramatics. I mean, for you go back a few years to that Salem game, uh, in the way that your season ended the year after that, I think in Niles, uh, against Niles at Scene Park, for yeah. you, what things are you trying to teach these guys so maybe you can have that longer postseason run this year and you can go out the way that you want to as a senior? Yeah, we just can't. We can't get ahead of ourselves because we've definitely caught some hiccups down in Myrtle, especially being up early in games and then finding a way to lose later and not putting a team away, that's something that we'll definitely work on. And like even the long runs in the district, I feel like we just can't play down or up to our competition. We just got to play our game. And I think that's what caused us in the last couple of years that we've screwed up on is we've got Hay, 
we've got this team today. Well, we're just going to go out and roll them. And then we up losing three to two, two to one, because we're not focused and focused on us and let alone we're focused on the other team. So I think we just have to play our game. You mentioned playing with your brother for the first time in your career. I mean, what were the expe- expectations going into this year? Um, and, and how's he doing? How's he holding up? And um, I mean, for you, it's, it's got to be weird seeing your little brother in the dugout and seeing your little brother practice and trying to hold him accountable as much or even more so than you do the rest of your teammates. I mean, yeah, it's, it's been fun so far and he's held his own. I mean, he played well in Myrtle. He had a couple really good at-bats for the game that he played. And I I think this is just a stepping stone for him getting used to the speed of varsity baseball because he's played some really good teams and really good competition the past summer uh, to go into the Pony World Series with a couple of these kids on this team. So I think this whole group can just step up once we play more and more games and get more comfortable with varsity. I mean, I, I think he's definitely a cornerstone for this team as the years progress. What's something that you had to tell him and pass along that that wealth of knowledge that you have from being that, uh, from wearing the tools of ignorance or from being a leader of this team for so long? And what's one thing that surprised you that you didn't have to tell him maybe along the way thus far? Um, hmm. One thing I've told him is just don't think too much. Like it, it's just a game. You don't have to get frustrated with every little thing. And it's just a game. Uh, something that I haven't had to tell him, which like, I, I'm impressed already of what he's done throughout this offseason, is he's, he's being really aggressive with everything that he's done. Swinging the bat, with ground balls and everything at third base, and just fighting for that spot to be at third. It, we have like three or four guys trying to compete to start every day at third. And I, I think he's he's handling that competition really, really well. Michael, we know you come from a great family in the Canfield community. Talk to me. I mean, we always talk about family first. Why is your family so important to where you are today and where you're trying to go? They've been back behind me since day one. I, I would not be here without them. My dad putting a love on my hand for the first time, it just stuck. My mom being here driving me everywhere to go for games, practices. I mean, as a freshman on varsity, we'd be uh, having practice right after school. She'd be always the one bringing my stuff. So, I mean, there's nothing that I can do without them. What's one thing you want people to remember as you move on? You know, I'm not too quick. We want you to have a nice long regular season and into the postseason. But as you move on into the next chapter of your career and your academia and obviously athletic career, What's one thing that you want people to remember about Michael Patelis? Definitely just always being a competitor. Like I will never back down to any challenge. I'll be the hardest worker in any room you put me in. And I, I will give all these guys any confidence that they need to go out there and compete. I mean, I know baseball is a hard game and that's why I just have to give them everything I can to have, have this team be successful and to bring each other up to be a family. Any idea what you're going to study over at Tiffin? Uh, I want to be like a trainer, uh, like a weightlifting trainer. So I'm thinking more like exercise science. That works, man. Nobody better than you. I mean, you talked about being the hardest worker in the room. There's no doubt that you're always accomplishing that, my friend. Michael, it has been an honor. It has been a pleasure. I am rooting for you always, no matter what you do in this world, whether it be baseball or otherwise. Thank you so much for what you've done here for YSN, for the community, for being a role model to everybody that watches, and certainly uh, for being a leader in the Canfield community and passing it along, hopefully to your brother. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, DJ.